everybody. Hey, this is episode two of a mini series of podcasts, could be three, could be four, uh, and talking about the voice of the black community uh, in the fitness industry. And it has been a great learning experience for me and uh, our guest on the first episode, Kim Sims Batiste and Reggie Williams. We covered a lot of topics super briefly. Now we're going to slow down a little bit with Reggie Williams and talk more solutions based and some hurdles for sure. But how do we promote, inspire, motivate uh, the black community to get more involved in the health and fitness industry on in different levels and in different avenues? But that's our primary focus on episode two. Thanks for joining us and let's get to it. Well, um, but, but I'm part of the Masters Fitness. Um, my partner, Carrie Ann, and where you can find these are on YouTube, Spotify, Google, and Apple accounts as well. So the episode number one dropped last Monday, or this past Monday, and we will uh, certainly continue that schedule. So why are we doing this? It's really two things. Reggie, I was thinking about this. It's really about black health issues, right? because there are specific health issues that tend to relate to the black community, uh, either right. inherited or not, right? Um, based right. on lifestyle. And then there's the career path part. And I think they're very related. I think more black professionals in the fitness industry will impact the first one. Do you agree or no? Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, okay. Yeah, go ahead. You know, yeah, li lifestyle. Um, Genetics, uh, access, um, yes, willingness, all those things definitely go into it. Um, education, resources. Yep, yeah, it's a lot. I just, I, I think they're very, very connected, and I don't, and I don't mean loosely connected. I think if you have, we talked a little bit about this uh, about a minute or two on the last podcast. Is is the aspirations to have the lifestyle, to be fit, or to be healthy, or to even have a career, really comes from black professionals here leading that charge. And so the folks down here that are in the decision-making process of, to get into the healthy lifestyle, they're learning, they're getting educated. It, it does need to come not dominantly, but it needs to come from a black face and a black leader. Uh, we talked about that uh, last time and you're on board with that, right? There is a tendency for black faces to follow black faces on the bigger general i'm not being specific but in the general idea would you agree i agree um you know just seeing someone um you know whether it's a a mentor or a model mm -hmm. and seeing okay yeah if, if they can do it i could do it i think you know in, in terms of obama and his presidency really start to set that precedent where people can say you know what we can uh reach not only just desire higher aspirations but but reach them and so uh i think the same thing is true for fitness Right. I mean, it's no longer, you know, blacks wanting to be a city council person. It's the bar has been raised tremendously. Oh, yeah. And for Absolutely. you and I, in our ages, Reggie, I think back to Arthur Ashe. I think back to Tiger Woods. I think back to all those guys. I'm not saying pro, good, bad, or indifferent. I'm saying they were a leader at the top of their game. And all of a sudden, magically, the number of blacks participating in those sports went up dramatically. So I don't think you can argue that. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I agree. I mean, even even golf, you know, Tiger inspired me, you know, uh, down there in Florida. And <laughs> when he was just, just killing it, yes. I actually started training a golf pro and uh, had a great respect for the game and saw what he was doing. And I was like, well, wow, okay. So I did take that interest where, you know, my grandmother lives, uh, or she's, she's passed now, but uh, she lived right, um, right behind the masters in, in augusta um, and no. so my uncle used to work there and so on and so forth so we always had golf clubs and all other stuff but never took the sport up you know because i didn't see that 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 person that looked like right. me right and you know so therefore, i just you know, therefore you really didn't have any interest really you know i don't know if that's a fault of anyone but you just didn't have the interest because they didn't look like you they didn't talk like you they weren't from where you're from i get it i totally get it and wow what an interesting thing you just said about the masters because they've had their own re race relations nightmares as well right that wasn't i mean hey, that wasn't so long ago. <laughs> that wasn't so long ago my friend it, no, it, it no. so oh yeah. my gosh isn't it funny how it's amazing how many lives 
anywhere, any really thing that you talk about industry wise, there could be a conversation about the impact of race relations. It's really incredible. So let's get back to that word that we really beat up a little bit, but accessibility. And what I mean by that, Reggie, is if I'm a, a young black person um, in my teens, uh, maybe I'm in my late teens, accessibility to a legitimate gym, all right? Um, now, if the resources are there, you're going to have access to more gyms, right? If the resources are tight or limited, you're going to have access to a lot less uh, gyms, meaning the number of gyms and facilities. But we also talked about, to Kim's point, the black leaders or black business owners owning gyms is really what will drive that. Um, and so what about accessibility? I'm young, I'm a teenager. I know it starts with parents and maybe community leaders, but can you give me a little, I didn't ask you this in the, in the pregame, but uh, what was your access to gyms when you were 15? Yeah, um, actually I did have access to gyms, um, but I was more outside uh, I was playing ball, you know, I was playing ball with the boys. We were going around to the courts and mm -hmm. AU and, yeah. you know, uh, uh, you know, playing organized basketball. Um, I really didn't have interest in the weight room. Um, uh, I didn't get that until I got into the Navy. Right. Um, and, and that's where I started to kind of learn about how to work out and so on and so forth. So I always had access, but didn't have necessarily an interest. Um, and yeah. then as I started to, to, to grow older right. is when I started to get that interest and realize, hey, it's actually a career here. And then that's when the career path started to open You up. took it on full steam. Yeah. But back to the point, um, here you are fully embedded into the fitness industry. And as a young man, 15, 16, 17, 18, gyms were not on your radar or traditional nope. gym. Right, right. Right. Wasn't on your radar at all. All right. So listen. Um, local gym, yep. inner city. Um, let's say it's owned by a black professional. Okay. Yep. Kim said, if there's not someone at the door saying hi, taking you through, showing you how to use equipment, showing you how, yep. you know, how to do things fitness wise, it's almost pointless. It can't be, it can't be a free for all gym where, teenagers, kids just running around amok. It, it has to have some direction. Can you add to that a little bit? I think that's true in any uh, uh, gym. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just, just being there and knowing there, there's a difference between having access uh, to, to gym equipment and then having success using gym equipment. And that comes Hello. down to uh, uh, <laughs> knowing what you're doing in there. You know what I mean? So yeah. Um, where, where the, I think the difference comes in is just simple economics. Um, mm -hmm. If you can afford to have somebody to educate you and train you, then, you know, you'll tend to have more success. Um, and that comes from just having, you know, the economic resources to be able to do that. Right. Or, or so, you know, someone who's willing, you know, and there are a lot of people. There's a lot of people out there, I know this for a fact, that are willing to take on a group of 20 kids and run them through camps all summer for little to nothing um, just because they love them and they want their community to thrive like every other community. I know that yep. those people exist and, and we'll get to those people uh, in a little bit because I do want to talk about those people. Uh, yep. Particularly to the inner city, we talked about it too. If it is not within the one to two mile for these young kids or young adults, it's not going to happen. So it's got to be within a one to two mile transportation, how do I get there? How do I even know about it? Um, and so those are all challenges. These are a lot of challenges. They're not unbelievable challenges, but they're certainly challenges to get um, the black community into a legitimate gym um, that's gonna take them it, more like a traditional gym. You know, there's, there's 30 pieces of cardio, there's a great piece of resistance equipment, there's group training. Just a, le a legitimate gym, which I'm going to get to in a second. What do I mean by legitimate gym and access uh, to the black communities to have legitimate gyms around them? And I think there's a way to do it. All right, let's talk about community black fitness professionals. So you have, you know, 30 black fitness professionals in a community. They're all training. A lot of them, as you may know, will be kind of sports specific, right? They're not exactly working in an LA fitness, you know, working 10 hour days. How do we get 
those folks to go into schools, businesses, even coaches, which I know coaches have respect, they have a network, um, and not only for the fitness lifestyle, Reggie, but also the career piece. Like, how do we lead that? Like, who, what organization can be created in each community to get the black fitness professionals to go into the schools and businesses and start promoting this? Or do you know if it's already being done? Great question. I was on a call yesterday with some uh, fitness professionals, and it was this exact same subject that we were talking about. Um, and it, and it, uh, it's, it's so broad. Uh, there's so many different avenues that we can do it, whether mm -hmm. there's government-sponsored programs. Um, I, I believe it should start in the school systems, um, whether it's you know uh, physical education slash training, um, uh, also reaching back. So uh, what we're looking at doing is already being fitness professionals, reaching back to the community. So going in, setting up, you know, whether it's a boot camp, but what I'm really excited about, and this is the, the heart of why I'm excited about being on this, on this podcast, is being able to create opportunity and reaching back into um, um, the community and finding somebody that either doesn't know it exists or does know it exists and they just don't know how to get their foot in the door. Mm -hmm. So now someone that uh, has been there, done that, can now reach back in and say, all right, well, good. There's a willingness there. Mm -hmm. I got you. Let's lock arms. In the and region. I think that's the key because those 30 people that I'm generally referencing, they have to be very willing to give up their time with no fees on the other end of it. Right now, if it comes back and pays them that they get to maybe hire a talent, then that's your payback. Right. But we have to be willing, um, it, you know, and it can't really be me. You know what I mean? It has to be you or someone like you, Reggie. And if you can multiply you and you go and do that, I think the government thing's another podcast altogether because I have tons of thoughts on that. I'm sure yep. you do too. The way you're nodding your head, you've thought about it many times. But yep. I think going back in to businesses, schools, leaders, and I do think coaches play a big role. T tell me what you think. Like coaches – can they go and do that? Can they get out of their sport performance head and actually coach lifestyle? What do you think? Am I too optimistic? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think we, I think we can. And I think it does. Um, it, it, it requires a different mindset, you know, because sometimes we can get so niche and, and kind of stuck in, in, in our path. And this is what I do. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a speed coach or whatever that is. Um, and, and it does. It requires us going back and then working on the fundamentals sometimes. And then uh, uh, it. just adding, adding that on to, you know, your skill set. So. You know, you almost like, I sit here and think about the, the coach. I, I am thinking about the coach a lot. Like, give them some more tools in their toolbox, Reggie. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Exactly. Very great like, choice of words. Okay. Yep. You know, have a little bit of entrepreneurial community, a volunteering mindset, all that mixed in together, because you have a lot of people's attention. I mean, they're, they could be an incredibly critical piece. You know, I could see, Reggie, and then we're going to move on. I could see the high school track every Saturday morning with 150 people following his or her programming from a community project. I can see it. I can see it. But instead, what do you have? They got six athletes. They're down in the end zone of the football field doing strength and conditioning drills, right? Which is fine. They got to pay the bills, right? But yep. I think they could really do that. And, and in California, I saw a little bit of that. When I was in California for six years, I saw 150 people out of track yep. doing this kind of stuff. Okay. Yep. All right. Health, exercise, degrees, and certifications. Carrie made a point to me that I think is a, is a big conversation. We're going to have to move fairly quick. It's, it's going to hit you for sure, Reggie. Okay. This, this mantra of you got one shot as a young black athlete, you got one shot. There's no plan B. You know what I'm saying, bro? Mm -hmm. Like you're going to be either a division one college athlete and get your school paid for, or you're, you're going to be a pro athlete. That is one tremendous pressure to put on any kid to, to do that. And the, and the pressure's real. Um, especially if you have a little bit of AAU background, Reggie, you know what that's like, but what about plan B? What about the number of people that you and I know, Reggie, that were these incredible young black athletes who made it so far and then 
their whole world just spiraled down and out of control because they didn't make it, right? Yep. They didn't yep. get the big contract. What do you think about that mentality and does it exist and is it real? It's real and it exists. Um, and it exists across the board, you know, whether it's I'm going to be an attorney and that doesn't work out uh, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's pros and cons to both. Mm -hmm. I think um, it, it, it helps in terms of a focus and an intentionality. Mm -hmm. um, but where it could also be unhealthy is if there's no plan B and that's all it was about. Um, and then something unfortunate like a, a, a physical injury or something like that takes you out. Um, so like anything, there's a balance to it. Uh, if it's, if it's gauged health fully, then yeah, it could, it could work. But, um, I think where you're going with the question is, um, how do we start to, uh, uh introduce a plan B with, um, balance with, with, with yeah. So it balance without up. interfering with that, with that focus. To, right. to, I'm not yeah. confused on there really can't be balanced if you want to be one of the elite athletes in the world. There, there really mm -hmm. can't be any balance. Do you know what I'm talking about right now? Yes. There can't be. I mean, it's got to mm -hmm. be all in. It, exactly. That's it, what I'm saying. So that's where that's got to kind of, you know, touch, it has to be touch, all in. The main thing has to be the touch. main thing. Yeah. But the education process as you go through. So here's what I was thinking. This is very basic. College athletes, more of them going into exercise science. Yep. Because how many people make it to an NCAA uh, that our NCAA scholarship athletes actually make it to the pros. I think it's 3%, I think, or something like that. It's crazy. Yes, it, it's, it's single digits. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So promote more of those guys and girls to go into exercise science fields so they can still be around the dream, mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. great careers. And Reggie, here's the connection that we talked about 15 minutes ago. Now they're going back into the community, degreed, educated, promoting inner city, health, wellness, mm -hmm. fitness. I just think instead of letting these guys off the hook, you know, with a general studies degree or whatever, just because remember there's plan A and then there's plan A, right? Right, right. But if we could get these guys to pursue what they're really passionate about, which is performance and fitness and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I just think if you increase that by a couple of hundred thousand people over the whole country, which is not a big number in the whole country, Mm -hmm. I just think you make a much bigger impact. And that's partly what these podcasts are about. How do we go into that high school junior senior who's going to sign a scholarship and get them right from there? You're going to be mm -hmm. an athlete, but there's a 97% chance you're not playing pro, bro. So mm -hmm. here's what we want you to do. We want you to be around that passion and that lifestyle for the rest of your life, whether it works out or not. How does that sound? I can't mm -hmm. imagine one of them going, that sounds like crap. I don't want to do that. Yep. You know, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Jen, that sounds great. But is the program there? Is the program there for them to actually say, hey, you know what? That's a that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm actually living and breathing that thing. I'm, you know, I have I have a coach that I go to and I see every day. Well, OK, well, let me get into that program. If that program does not exist, then, you know, mm -hmm. so that's where I think mm -hmm. it starts to go back. Um, my thing is, I think it has to go back to the school system. Yeah. If we're going to start reaching into this generation. It needs to be the, the, the access there mm -hmm. for them to be able to step into it and start to learn it prior to getting to college. And that um, whole, Reggie, that, that little drop off right there could be filled by legitimate high quality certifications too. I mean, yes. look, I've managed the thousands of personal trainers and I can tell you the certified trainers and the degree trainers the margin was this big. Mm -hmm. If you really mm -hmm. took a legitimate high level certification and you mm -hmm. learned about programming, the difference was so marginal, even though these kids had spent, you know, five years getting their degree, they yep. certainly knew some things about molecular stuff and metabolism and stuff. But, but as far as training a human body, there wasn't that big of a difference. So I think that that could be a nice way to promote those certifications. And then the certifications, by the way, Reggie, you need to do a good job mm -hmm. of going to, because mm -hmm. the black community is not going to go to the certification, right? Exactly. The certification exactly. has to go to the black community. Right. And black or internships and stuff like yes. that. You know what yes. I mean? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I think Equinox has an interesting model that you could almost follow with that internship uh, type system. I think that's really good. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about um, how do we get more black owned fitness businesses, Reggie? Mm. <laughs> so that's I'm a great question. How do we do it? 
And here's the big one. Here's where you and I get on airplanes every weekend. Who trains them how to operate and manage their business? Right. They're interested. Right. Their heart's in the right place. Their healthy, fit lifestyle is fully ingrained in them and their family. Now what? Yeah. Well, that's a multi-pronged uh, uh, question there because there's a difference between being a great coach and being a great uh, business owner. Um, so that's going to take uh, a different set of skills. So yes, you have to be very good at your, uh, at your, at your skill set in terms of coaching, but then uh, business is a whole nother realm. Um, whether that's accounting, whether that's uh, uh, um, raising capital to even get into the space, um, uh, a knowledge of real estate and negotiating leases. I mean, uh, Isn't it, it, funny? it, it goes now, on and on. Your yeah. responsibilities, honestly, a small portion of it's actually writing programs and getting people healthy. That's a major component. And that's what's going to pay the bills. But 80% of it being an owner is not that, you know, it's yep. crazy. It really, which, but, but which you know, is, that reality needs to be said though. Yep. So, which is why you really have to be good at being a coach and be able to do that almost subconsciously because there's so many different things that are happening in the background that uh, if you, if you aren't on top of those, then the coaching it never even makes its way there because now the door is closed. So I, I'm you, actually, you, you have, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Yep. You, I, I, I'm that. becoming more and more passionate about more black fitness facility owners. And that can be small. That can be a thousand square foot PT center or, you know, a, a 30,000 square foot mom and pop health club um, or yeah. franchise or franchise, right? Which yep. is now, if you're in a franchise, you're not necessarily in the training business. You're in the business of fitness. So um, who is going to train them to operate and manage? So I think of the big organizations. I think of the ideas, the ACEs, the ACSMs, and maybe there's other organizations that really do have a nice focus on fitness management and operating. And if there mm -hmm. isn't, there might need to be, Reggie. Mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. people that really want to do it. And I'm thinking of, of course, black owners right now, but, mm -hmm. but I, I'm just very scared that they get in there. I would be as I would with any race. Doesn't matter. I would be very scared if they didn't have the tool. Mm -hmm. they needed. You know what I mean? That would make me very nervous for, go ahead. Yeah, I think so. Not only those organizations, but then this is actually something I'm working on as well as having a, a business development uh, uh, company that does help with that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I guess you could say the, the, the question is, if I'm going to start off as a coach, how do I even make it there? What's my path? Um, and one path would be, you know what, maybe uh, it's I start training part time. I have my bread and butter. Uh, a full-time job over here yes. and then I start training to learn the skill of, of coaching yeah. and, and training and then once I start to get that then now what I start to do is build a business on top of that that I can now replace that full-time job and, when do and I then now I have a business mm -hmm. yeah so now you just start to layer it and then once you're ready to get to that next step then yeah now you're going to need a coaching program a business coaching program something like that that's going to come in but as far as just being able to just take it from A to Z on your own. Um, Dude, that's tough for anybody. That's going to be tough for anybody, period. Yes. Um, but if we're going to enhance and promote and improve and, and give black fitness owners, gym owners, a first shot at this, I, we just have to have an infrastructure underneath to help them succeed as we would want to with anybody. Um, but, the, but the black community, particularly inner city, is not necessarily gonna have the resources at their fingertips uh, as others, right. may, the more served versus the underserved. So anyway, that's an interesting, we'll talk offline about that in a couple of days, Reggie, because I think either it's a nonprofit company or a, profit, or a profit company, either one, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I think they could both work. I think the nonprofit drives me more in my brain right now. Because um, mm -hmm. it's underserved. It's underserved community. And you got to so go in. It has to be resources somewhere. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So I think that's a really cool conversation. Okay, man, yeah. let's see what we got here. Now, you got 100, 100 young black men and women in a room. Okay. What do they need to know about being successful? launching their fitness career 
and then being successful. I have my list and I'll get to it later. I'm only going to do three things, but what do they need to know? You're in there doing a lecture. You're promoting the career. And they're like, yes, they'll run through a wall for you, Reggie. What did you just tell them is important to succeed in the fitness industry? Um, wow. Uh, good question. Um, first, you got to be coachable. You have to be coachable. Um, there has to be a passion for helping people. Um, and and there, there's going to be challenges around uh, um, um, no matter what you do. Um, so working through those challenges, not giving up, um, looking for resources, uh, looking to people that have already been there, done that. That's exactly um, what Carrie said. Carrie yep. said one of her top three would be you go interview every black professional that is successful or a successful personal trainer in the industry and you hold them down for an hour and you ask them every question you can. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. If you, if you can find, if you can find somebody that has been there, done that, that's going to save you oh. years of, of mistakes and uh, <laughs> yeah, it'll true. definitely speed up the process. Oh, it will. Yep. Like exponentially. I think exponentially. All right. Yes. So is that it? Yeah, I'll, I'll go with those three. Okay. Yeah. All right. So minor, minor, it's going to start real basic. First okay. impression. First impression. You in your first interview, you're trying to get into the health and fitness business. You better look the part and dress the part. And that does not mean you need to be a fitness freak. That means you need to look professional and take it seriously. This is not a gym job. This is you launching a new career. Don't look at it any different than if you were trying to get a job as a law firm, you know, runner. All right. Exactly. So that's the yep. first thing. I got to take you seriously. Okay. Number two, educate yourself like a mad scientist for the first two years of your career in the fitness industry. Mm -hmm. And I know you. Yep. Agree with that one. Yep. That's what <laughs> like, we were just talking about. Yep. Go nuts. Get the skill set. Go nuts. Absolutely go nuts. So when it's time to, as you stated about two minutes ago, when it's time to pull the trigger and go full time, you got all the tools you need right here. And then yep. third, be mentally prepared in the first two years to pay your dues, dude. Amen. Because the fitness Amen. industry does not come easy in the first one to two years, man. Those are some long, long days, Reggie. Yes, sir. You got to live mean, in it, Jim. You got to live in it. Totally. Yep. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's exposure. It's, uh, it, it's, it's just learning. Just from being in it is is just so much. You 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 literally do. You have to entrench yourself into it. Dude, tell yeah. me those tell me those Miami work days weren't going from six a.m. to eight p.m. From open to close, man. Open to close, and then the times that were that were you had to be working on yourself, and then you know, and then you get interrupted, <laughs> right? But then that ends up turning to a client. Yep. So you you literally have to live in the gym. It's 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 nothing that you're just going to step into, and then you know, I I know I said earlier start part time, um, but that's that's if you got to make ends meet, then yeah. But if you can put yourself in a position to you know, maybe I don't have to pay rent and I can stay, you know, with, yes. with, with family. And then now that allows me the bandwidth to be able to get in and spend the time. That's going to speed your success. That's going to speed up the time frame for you to get. You know, success. it's funny that you say that because I've been in many, many meetings with young trainers that are just getting in it. And I'm like, you're going to make $1,500 a month. You got to keep your job. Like, do not let your other job go. I'm going to try to guarantee that you make it but don't you dare quit your other job. You know, there's a time right. where, you know, your yourself out personal it. training hours will come up and then, okay, now it's time. But that's usually yes. a year or two. It's not a yes. six month deal unless you're just an absolute freak. Um, but yeah, I've done a lot of career counseling <laughs> with people like yeah. don't quit your day job, dude. Um, because yeah. you need to make sure it's right for you and that you still have the heart and you do have a servant heart. If you don't have the, the heart of a server who likes to serve, um, I don't know that you'll be financially successful in the fitness industry if that's not kind of who you are. Um, Correct. but I think to pay your dues, uh, educate yourself like a, just a wild person for two years, man, get all the education you can. And that doesn't mean necessarily formal education. I think you said it indiscreetly, Reggie, talk to everybody, you know, that's succeeding and buy them a cup of coffee and, uh, yes. you know what you gotta do. And first impressions are, are obviously really big. Okay. Yep. All right, Reggie. So listen, we started this thing out with 
inheriting health issues just as a black person, and we know them, right? It's blood pressure, it's diabetes, it's, there's, there's, a, there's a, a little sh a list of, of things that are inherited, which is unfair, and it's real though. So mm -hmm. improving that as a society, okay? Mm -hmm. And then the career path. Um, is there, I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but is there another thing that's driving you that's on your mind? Like, okay, career paths, there's a lot of modalities to that, a lot of arms to that. We talked, we both agree that schools are probably the biggest thing. Um, and schools can be, in, in some, you know, scenario, school can be as important as, as mom and dad telling you to do it. The school and people kind of getting on board as a you know, if there's a hundred kids doing something, that can be as powerful as a mom or a dad saying. And I know from growing up, whatever the kids were doing, I wanted to be a part of it. Uh, whether my parents- Take the village. Yeah, it yeah. does. Whether my parents mm -hmm. wanted me to or not, I was excited and passionate about it. So are those two yep. things enough for these series of podcasts? The health issues that can be impacted by more blacks as a fitness career. Is there anything else? Uh, I would say mindset um, okay. and, and breaking, which, which is really everything that we're talking about now, mm -hmm. um, especially mm -hmm. with all the changes happening out there, generational, break, generational mindset, breaking that. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, when it comes down to health and fitness, it is, it's a lifestyle. It's not just, you know, let me get some reps in at the gym. It's what are you doing the other 23 hours of the day outside of that? That, that go into said, impact that. You remember what Kim said? She says, unless they can they can understand and have perspective on social media fitness versus the lifestyle of fitness and you know being able to have the education to understand the difference um i agree with her i, I think that it's it's not that enticing as a career or a lifestyle um if that's really what you're flipping through on your phone you know a thousand uh, pictures a day that's not yep. going to get it done. So it's going to take somebody to sit down and really have that very honest conversation with the black community mm -hmm. as a whole. Um, well, I think my takeaways today, Reggie, are really in no specific order. I think coaches could have a tremendous impact if we give them more tools. Okay. I think yep. uh, the schools is where it starts. I think that's huge. My thing for that is that's a great idea, but unless there is, a not-for-profit organization that's with legitimate accredited people on the board of that community going in, I don't think you have a fighting chance. Is that harsh to say, or do you kind of agree with that? No, I think it, it, it's all encompassing. You got to have, you got to have uh, uh, mentors, um, people that really care and want to give back. They have to get in there. Otherwise, you know, like anything, it's just going to fizzle. Um, cause there won't be any layers to it. So yeah. yeah, I think all those things need to come together in order for there be tr to be true change. Yeah. Um, and I think of the pro athletes that have, you know, do unbelievable community work. I mean, there's, there's so many, there's so many good dudes out there doing it. I think of the Brendan nine Badejo's and those guys. Um, we were on a call yesterday. Yep. Uh, great. I think that's wonderful. Yep. And you know what I think about yep. is taking their mindset of getting away from performance camps to fitness and health lifestyle. And mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. those guys tend to fall into that, what you said, you know, that real narrow focus. Um, mm -hmm. You know, man, if those guys could broaden their view of what is mm -hmm. needed versus just the athletic performance stuff. Um, and I know some of them probably are. Um, mm -hmm. I think that would be a game changer as well. If they're speaking Reggie, a different language other than just performance and athletics, I think that's a game changer. If you're a pro athlete, you know, male or female. So you're, you're, so you're speaking more general population. So, so, you know, get out there, work with general population versus. Yeah, I think it's just yep. the, the, the former black pro athletes language. If it mm -hmm. has wellness in it, health, wellness, um, the problems that blacks deal with that not necessarily other races deal with when they inherit these health issues, when they start talking about that instead of performance and, you know, AAU and, and there's, there's a lot of dysfunction and all of that stuff in my opinion. But yeah, I just think it is broad, but I do think it is to the black community that they're speaking different words and languages that are not sports and performance. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I didn't mean to make that muddy, but, um, yeah. 
practice. Yeah, I think it's important that they speak in those terms in wellness. And I do think the idea of fitness and ACE and ACSNs and those guys that are educating us, um, mm -hmm. and I know they're having meetings on it. I promise you they're having meetings on this. Yep. How can we help yep. more now than they ever have in their entire existence? Um, hopefully yep. we'll see some board communities um, come together and go into because it's not going to come the other way. It's, it's going to be, yeah. I think for now, for now, Reggie, I think it needs to be a one way street. <laughs> and then yeah. eventually, you know what I'm saying, brother? And then eventually I think, I think it can become a two way street. Well, where I see, I, I see, I see what you're saying. And you know me, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'd much rather you be true to uh, uh, your passion and what it is. So if you, came up through that and you made it to professional sports, most likely your, your comfort zone or, or, or everything that you learned came through that, that avenue, right? So sports and performance. So it's just inherently, they're just, they're, we're just teaching what we've already learned. Mm -hmm. What I think now needs to happen is now we just need more talent out there um that can you know the passion is general population the pa the passion is special populations mm -hmm. um and that's going to be somebody that's out there right now that maybe isn't going to go to to pro sports but now they're going to go through a vocational school that's going to give them um the, the the nuts and bolts of, of yeah. education and training that they'll need so they can be passionate about that population right. versus taking someone that you know that's not their passion but now they're going to go over and do it. And it's going to be a little half, a little happy. You know what, what I mean? I don't want you to be Reggie. happy. I want you to be all in. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. We got to get out of here soon, but there is a saying, what is it? Don't work on your weakness because you're only going to improve it 10%. Yep. <laughs> work on your strength. Okay. There you go. I hear you. There you go. I hear there you. you go. I hear you. So let's just find the guys that are passionate about that and give them the tools they need to go out and then be rock stars. in that. Yeah. Area, instead so. of climbing a really steep battle, you don't have much of a, a climb. I got you. Exactly. That's a very good point, Reggie. Exactly. A great point, dude. Well, listen, yep. we're going to keep this alive, man. We're going we're gonna to shut off here in a few seconds. I really appreciate Love. this. I, I, you know what I want? I want executives to hear this. I want community leaders to hear this. Uh, I don't care what race, but I want everybody to hear the, the challenges, back to the challenges and the hurdles that the Black communities have to jump over that other communities do not. Uh, and it is real, I know, because of where I've worked. And, uh, and I just want to expose that, not in a negative light at all, zero right. negative light, but in a solutions ideas light. And I do think, Reggie, that these podcasts that we're creating here are going to start to be shared. And I do yep. think it's going to land in the right hands of someone who goes, hey, we need to have a call. Let's create yep. something and let's get that street moving. I really do think that. So I appreciate it, brother. Unless you have any final wisdom for us, we're gonna go ahead and sign off, man. I appreciate you for actually uh, uh, doing this, man, and heading it up and putting it together because I, I believe the same thing, man. It's, uh, it. It, it's gonna take a village and it's gonna take, it's so many layers to this, but starting the conversation and actually putting wheels to what we're talking about. Uh, so yeah. not just sitting around talking about it all the time, you know, okay, what, what are we actually going to do, you know, and so. Yeah. And when uh, these are over, we'll talk about who we're going to call, me and you, who yeah. are we can call, okay? We'll awesome, talk awesome. All right, man. Well, listen, we'll talk hey. later, okay? Thank you so much, Reggie. Appreciate Be you. Be blessed, my brother. Appreciate you.